All right, in this video, we're going to talk about tangent lines and how limits have to do with them. But we're going to start out with secant lines so I can show you the application of a limit. And we take limits of secant lines to find tangent lines. And what is a tangent line? Well, you'll find out soon. So I'm going to draw a function on this graph. We'll draw it like this. And I'm going to take two points. I'm going to take P. And we're going to put it at a point A and f of a. So graphically, a is here and f of a is right here. Again, we, we can think of y being f of a because this is an xy coordinate, but we know that y is done by taking a function evaluating at a certain point a, so if we use this notation, it'll make the definition much clearer when I do it. And we're going to find a point q, which we're going to call x and f of x to be consistent. Remember, this is technically y. So that's a point x and of course this is your point f of x here. Now a secant line is a line, a straight line that hits both points. So let's try to draw that straight. Ah, straight enough. Okay, so that is our secant line right there. And we want to find the slope of the secant line. So if you remember the slope is denoted by the letter m and we're going to take it between two points p and q. This is going to equal the change in y over change in x. And if we take the change in y, this is the same as saying f of x minus f of a. So we want it to be positive over the change in x, which is this thing right here, which will want to be x minus a to keep things positive. Okay, so this is your slope formula of a secant line. Now, what is a tangent line? So this is what we really want to know and is huge in calculus, very, very important. Okay, a tangent line is when we take a Q here and we move it closer and closer and closer and closer to P until it's pretty much directly on P. And then we take the tangent or the secant line between those, those two points, which is essentially a tangent line. So it is a straight line that just touches that point right at that point, touches the curve right on that point. And that's a tangent line. It's a little bit harder to see, but the equation should make sense. In fact, I can redraw another function. So if we have a function that's just a curve right there and we find the tangent line in here, it is a line that represents the slope at that point. All right, so this is your tangent line. So a tangent line, I'm going to write this in brackets. I really don't want to write this in brackets because it's so bad, but it's kind of like the secant line between the same point. Don't, don't take that seriously. It might help you remember it though. And this is going to equal our slope M, which again, we're going to take the limit as X approaches A, since that's what it means. It means X is getting very, very close to A until it pretty much is on A. And that is the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. It is the exact same formula. We're just taking the limit as x approaches a to get the tangent line. Okay, let's do an example question. Okay, suppose we're given the equation y is equal to x squared and we're given the point 1, 1. Okay, so what do we want to do? Number one, we want to find the slope of this equation, of the tangent line, find the slope of the tangent line. And two, we want to find the equation for tangent line. So equation for tan line. Again, tangent line. I'll shorten it, tan line. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, we're going to take, well, we know how to find the slope. So let's start with finding the slope. M is equal to the limit as x approaches a, but we've got to be careful here because we know a is 1 of f of x, which is x squared, minus f of a. And of course, this is our f of a, and this is our a. So f of a is equal to 1. I should write that in the same color to be consistent. Okay. 1 over x minus a, which is x minus 1. Well, we can simplify this. You guys have done this limit a lot probably at this point. So this is x minus 1 times x plus 1 all over x minus 1. Of course, these two cancel, 
and then we get the limit as x goes to 1 of x plus 1, which is equal to 2. So our slope m is equal to 2. Now what does the equation for a tangent line look like? Well, the equation for a tangent line looks like y equals mx plus b. You should have done this in your sophomore year of high school, so this isn't something new to you. If it is, I'll show you how to solve it real quick. Okay, so what do we know so far? We know that y is equal to 2x plus b. Now how do we find b? Well, we're given the point 1, 1. So that's your x, that's your y. Plug these numbers in. y is equal to 2 times 1 plus b. So negative 1 is equal to b. Therefore, your tangent line equation is y is equal to 2x minus 1. There you go. At the point 1, 1, the tangent line equation is 2x minus 1. If you graph this equation, let's graph this bad boy. Okay, so x squared we know looks like this. It goes up. And here's your point. Well, I did erase there. Why is it erasing? I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't want me to draw this. Okay. Again. There you go. Here's your point 1, 1. And if we take the equation 2x minus 1, we know that a negative 1 is a point there. When x equals 0, y is equal to negative 1. It goes up 2, goes across 1, and our line kind of looks like this, which is a pretty accurate description of a tangent line. All right. So that was a good example. I'm going to show you one more way to get the slope of your tangent line, another formula. So we have m is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So what does this look like graphically since I have two variables in a function? You're saying, what? What the hell is that? How do I do that? That's probably what you're saying. So what we're saying is we're going to have a point A, and then we're going to add H to it, and it's going to get to some point A plus H. And what we're going to do with this point is we're just going to move it closer and closer to A, so H becomes 0. And this is the same limit, so if you have a line here, you have a secant line, and then we just push it forward until it becomes a tangent line. This is about the same definition. It makes algebra easier in some case, so in the example I'm about to do, the algebra is much easier. So here's a formula. f of x is going to be 3 over x, and we're given the point 3, 1, and all we want to do is find the slope. I just want to demonstrate this equation. Okay, so we take the limit as h goes to 0. This is always to 0, not to a, of f of a plus h. Okay, so this is the same. I'm going to write this whole thing out. f of, well, we have a is equal to 3, and f of a is equal to 1. So this is f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0. Now we're going to evaluate these things. So 3 plus h, we just plug 3 plus h into everywhere that x is. So we have 3 over 3 plus h minus f of 3, which we know is 3 over 3, which is the same thing as 1, divided by h. Okay, so this algebra is a little bit easier to do, so I will continue on. What we're going to do is we're going to simplify the numerator right here. So we're going to multiply the negative 1 by 3 plus h. So we're going to get 3 minus 1 times 3 plus h, all divided by 3 plus h. Again, all divided by h because this is the bottom. Of course, this is the limit as h goes to 0. We're going to move this down to the denominator since it is the denominator. And we'll expand things out on the top. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 minus 3 minus h over h times 3 plus h, you can kind of see that the 3's will cancel on top. We'll get a negative h over h, so that will cancel. 
and then we will get the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over 3 plus h. And when we plug h equals 0 in, we get negative 1 third. So the slope of this line is negative 1 third. Again, this might seem difficult at first, but with a few practice problems, hopefully you'll understand it. So I'm going to give you one. Hopefully this will go very well. So what are we going to find today? Let's take the equation y is equal to uh, the square root of x. And I'm going to pick a point. I'm going to say, uh, what was an easy point? Let's just take 1. So 1, 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. This is very simple. See if you can find the slope. That's what I want. I want you to find the slope for me. You can use either the two equations above. One might be easier than the other. Of course, this is probably going to be the first one you try, which is easier since this one's a little bit less threatening. But pause the video, see if you can do it, and I'll come back in a second and give you the answer. Okay, hopefully you had some time to do this. So let's take a look. Well, our slope m is equal to the limit as x approaches 1. Again, this is our a right here. This is our f of a of f of x, which is the square root of x, minus f of 1, which is 1, over x minus 1. Hmm. What do we do in this situation that we totally never ever seen before just kidding of course we've seen it tons of times we multiply by the conjugate this is what we do when we want to get rid of square roots we multiply by the conjugate so this is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1 of course the top and bottom cancel so we get the limit as x goes to 1 of 1 over the square root of x plus 1 which is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1 half. So again, question might seem hard at first, but it's basically getting it to ten, like the limit form and then figuring out what the variables are, expanding, and doing some tricks to get your limit. This is basically an application of the basic building blocks of limits. That's why I did a limit review video right before this, because being able to do limits is crucial to understanding the point of tangent lines and its application or its practical use. Maybe the term it's being used called derivatives, which we'll see next video. Super fun. And uh, I'll see you guys then where we'll talk formally about what's going on here.